Great, everybody. So welcome to our, our first post Aikido at the Leading Edge Telesummit community call. It's really great to be here with you guys. And, and, and um, I, I'm going to be sharing today uh, three things that I learned from the Telesummit that I, you know, I, I, that I, in some way, I've already, I, I, I already had a good sense of these and it just was a big affirmation uh, to, to, uh, to, to, to do the Telesummit and have these things kind of you know, the light shine on them again. So, um, but, but also there was a deeper learning for me there and, and I'm sure that uh, it'll have a, continue to have a big impact on you. And uh, for sure it would have a, it'll have kind of a transformational impact on your Aikido, I'm, I have no doubt about it. But um, first I just wanna say thank you all for, um, you know, not for just for joining today, but for really being being part of the Telesummit, you know, it's been it's been quite an amazing journey. I've told you several times in the mails and in the Facebook lives that it took me quite some time to recover. Well, not really, it took me several a few days to recover, and then several days to catch up after that. And and I was traveling also uh, about four days after the Telesummit. And yeah, so anyways, I, I I feel like my life is back in balance, and I'm 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 ready for. Uh, or the new addition to our family that's due to come in two weeks. It could be sooner, but we'll see. And um, <clears throat> your feedback's been amazing. You know, the, 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 the feedback that I got from you guys have been really, really fantastic. So thank you all for that. And I'm, I'm I don't know, it's, it's just been a lot to digest and I'm still digesting it. So in a way, this call is, is, is partly to kind of, um, continue that digestion, you know, to connect with you guys and, and, uh, and uh, not just tell you my experiences or what I've learned, but to hear what, what you've learned as well, but also to tell you what's up and what's uh, going on, what's the next step for Aikido at the Leading Edge. And I do have a big announcement that I'm gonna be making at the end of this call about uh, our next steps and ways that you can continue to be involved, involved or evolved as you like. Um, but I'll, I'll go into that more towards the end of the call. But uh, first, I guess without further ado, maybe, maybe I'll just, um, we will have a communal aspect to this, um, to this call today. But uh, first, what I want to do is, is uh, just maybe go ahead and go into the teaching and share with you uh, the three things that, that I learned that, that have been somewhat transformational for me. And, and um, I guess I'll begin at the beginning. Uh, the first thing is, is uh, let me just put my notes, organize my notes here a little bit. So sorry about that. Right. Well, this is something that a, a, a friend of mine and a teacher several years ago uh, told me. And, uh, you know, I've, I've been discovering it more and more, uh, you know, in my own practice, in my own life. But, but this tell us something that really kind of, shine a, a bright light on it and it's the spiritual truth that 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 which unites us is infinitely greater than anything that divides us so the things that unite us is infinitely greater than anything that divides us so um, often when I'm teaching uh, seminars, especially outside of Israel here, um, I'll have several people, I'll have people joining from several different groups. So it's not just one, a group of people that are doing my style of Aikido, but there'll be, you know, several groups and several different styles of Aikido that come. And, and I've been teaching seminars well, probably close to 20 years now. So it's, it's already a, something I've, I've dawned on me a long time ago. But if I were to teach technique or my style of technique, it tended to create division in the group. And the, you know, if there's 20 or 30 or 40 people, whatever, if I were to teach my technique, some people would be into it, some people are not into it. And it just became more and more clear that, okay, if I organize the, the seminars around principles, universal principles, it just brings everybody together. Their style and this style, it, it's all fine, whatever they do, but it's the principles that everybody are uniting around. So it was very clear that, you know, principles unite and techniques divide. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm not, I'm not saying it's a bad thing that techniques divide. It's okay to have our distinction and, and, and to have diversity in Aikido. In fact, it's a very good thing. 
but I think we shouldn't forget that there's a bigger there's a bigger picture, and the bigger picture is you know that the principles unite. And the Telesummit for sure was the way that all of us came together, all those different voices, all those different really styles of Aikido. You know, if we got together in the same room and practice, we might not be as so connected as, as we ended up being, but we actually organized around principles. And that was a beautiful thing because the principles are infinitely resourceable, that they're a reflection. Aikido principles, principles in general are a reflection of the abundance of the universe. And an and Aikido that's a principles-based Aikido is actually going to return that abundance to us, you know, so many people spoke about, um, uh, so many of the teachers spoke about the spiritual aspects of, of the training, which were, which were, they're not usually addressed so often um, in, in classes, you know, because we go to class and we have to teach techniques and this and that. And, and um, you know, the fact that, that we could gather around that was, was really a beautiful thing. And it just, again and again, it just, I felt, you know, renewed and, res and, and, and like, dipping into a deeper well of things. It was really quite beautiful. And um, it just kind of affirmed to me that when we put awareness, or we put spirit, whatever you want to say, but let's just say awareness in the middle of the way that we gather um, and we organize around that, something really beautiful happens. And even when we had the more edgy conversations, it was always held in that beautiful context. And, you know, it was so great to see the teachers working with each other. And even, you know, even in a few times where they didn't necessarily get along or we didn't necessarily get along, it was really held in this beautiful, in this beautiful space of unity. And um, uh, it's so great that, you know, instead of defending the separation of why we do this and who we are, all the energy that's spent on that, we actually connected around who we are as one. And my Kotagashi and your Kotagashi is different. It doesn't even matter if we, even if we come from the same style, our kotegaishi is different. And most of us actually come from different styles, different ways of doing it. So our kotegaishi is different. But my center and your center is the same center. My connection and your connection is the same connection. My ground and your ground, like the deepest ground, you know, in, in a universal sense, is the same ground. Love in me, universal love, not romantic love or personal love, but universal love in me and universal love in you is the same love. And it's at that level, that kind of level of spiritual principle that we are actually united. And that's just, you know, that's when we organize around that, you know, it's we just stop wasting energy on separation and we become renewed. And, uh, and that was the, you know, one of the first things that came to me that the principles are infinitely resourceful and that, um, you know, that, that, um, when we stop wasting energy with separation, we become renewed and a tremendous amount of energy becomes released. And there was something that, um, that um, Koichi Barish sensei said uh, early on, he said that uh, in one of our talks, actually before the Telesummit, but it still sticks with me, he says that, uh, I think it was his, even in his, in the Telesummit, he said it was his, it was his, um, what do you say? his key practice advice for, for people to, to keep their Aikido at the leading edge, that um, to continue to listen to the whisper of nature, you know, to continue to listen to the whisper of nature, because that's going to lead us forward. That's going to lead us more into wholeness and more into unity and uh, less in separation. So, so again, so lesson number one, that which unites us is infinitely greater than anything that divides us. So the second lesson that I, that I came away with uh, from this uh, Telesummit was, um, again, something that I, that I did to a certain amount of it practicing in my own life, but, but it was affirmed again and again. And it's simply the value of staying in relationship, the value of staying in relationship, especially when it's challenging and difficult. And this was something that Richard Strozzi Heckler uh, mentioned in his keynote address, in the last keynote address, he said that we need to learn to stay in relationship in challenging moments with others. We need to learn to stay in relationships during challenging moments with others. So, 
again, I don't know if you guys were there at the beginning or, or I, I mentioned this a couple of times and I mentioned it certainly in one of the um, panel discussions, but one way to look at the evolution of our civilization, human civilization, you know, we came from, we moved up from apes into, into, um, I was going to say Donald Trump, but it's not really the pinnacle of our civilization, but to Shakespeare. Okay, so we've gone from from really cavemen and cave women up to Shakespeare, up to you know high tech, up to amazing things, creating really incredible, incredibly high society, high, high civilization in a way, and the evolution or the development of that civilization civilization uh, can be looked at as nothing more than a series of successful conversations where we get together and we just can't, we can't make it happen or we're talking across each other and then something happens and we, we plug into each other and we get it and we're able to succeed in that conversation. Two worldviews come together and say, oh yes, or we see a bigger way together and we evolve together. And, um, and that's really, hang on a second, I'm just gonna turn off my, my mail because it's making some noise here. But that, that's one of the, the values of staying in relationship, especially when it is challenging and difficult. It's just, it's too easy to, to collapse into, into conflict. As you know, we have hundreds of thousands of years of biological conditioning to, you know, when there's conflict or when there's a challenging situation, challenging relationship, to fight, flight, freeze. You know, that's just what we do. And we, the reason we're here today, the reason you and I are here today is because we've done that well is that your ancestors and my ancestors were survivors. They weren't the, they weren't the ones that were chilled and uh, you know, meditating on rocks back in the caveman days. You know, then the, those guys, they got eaten by the saber-toothed tiger. Our ancestors were the ones that were paranoid and freaked out and basically they survived. Their conditioning is our conditioning and, and you know, we are deeply, deeply hardwired to survive. So it's very easy, I mean, it's, it's not even right to say it's very easy, it's what we do. When there's, a, when there's a threat or a conflict or a challenging situation, we create more separation. We either attack it or we run away from it or we freeze. And yet, you know, as human beings, you know, we have been graced, blessed by God or the, he or she or it or whatever you want to call the organizing principle of the universe. We have been blessed to also have higher capacity, a higher intelligence, uh, but it doesn't come for free. You know, we have to work at it. And one of the ways of working at it, as Richard Strozzi Hecker said, is that we need to start to kind of understand and value um, the capacity to stay in relationship during challenging situations. Um, what was beautiful about this uh, um, uh, telesummit is that we came to understand that we have a much more inclusive community than perhaps we've given ourselves credit for. You know, we, I think many of us do, you know, we, we belong to Aikido families, Aikido clans, and, and it's Aikido tribes, and it's very nice. And usually, the, you know, we have a lot of good community there. But then there's that other group over there, and there's other group over there, and an organization over there, and that style over there. And there's many things that just create more and more separation, or these guys are very, uh, you know, kind of technical oriented, or these guys are all principle oriented. Or we, it's just human nature to create separation. But what was beautiful is that, you know, everybody kind of came together uh, with an inclusivity and an openness that was really beautiful to see. And there was, a, there was a, just a container, you know, day by day, session by session, because many people were coming back again and again, but, and especially from the teachers, you could see that we're, there, we were co-creating a container of trust, co-creating a t container of openness and a container of good will now to be fair you know it was it, a lot of times it was kind of like preaching to the choir a bunch of you know idealistic aikido teachers and students coming together and speaking and communicating with other idealistic teachers and aikido students and that's that's fine it's, it's it's a great community to kind of fly high in but not all of the panels like that in fact one of the most energized panels that we had was the panel with um on his Aikido martial art with uh, Vince Salvatore, Roy Dean, uh, Corky Quakenbush, myself, and Lenny Sly. And that one was intentionally meant to be provocative, you know, because if Aikido can't walk the path of conflict, then what is Aikido? It has no 
purpose? And this is a very hot topic question. Um, so in a way, you know, that's not necessarily that question for me personally is not really, it, it is an important question, but it's not one of my top 10 questions in Aikido, but that panel discussion, it just stayed with, it's still with me. It, it was one of the most energizing panel discussions. And there's a lot of questions. I left that discussion with more questions than when I went into it. And um, the reason I bring that up is because the value of staying in relationship, even though that was a challenging panel discussion, we, we held it, we stayed in relationship, you know, and it was held in such a beautiful way. And I feel, I mean, it was, it was a, a panel of men. So, you know, that the, the, the comment did come up, you know, why weren't there any women on this? And that, that, that's a whole nother discussion. Um, but my feeling afterwards, and I say that because, you know, I'm a man and, and I'm about to make a, a very masculine comment, um, my feeling after that panel discussion with those four guys was that I would stand shoulder to shoulder. You know, when the barbarians at the gate, I want to stand shoulder to shoulder with those guys. And I felt more bonded with them, kind of in a male bonding way. I felt more bonded with them, even though we all didn't agree and it got a little bit tense at times. I felt more bonded with those guys at the end of the, the panel discussion than, than I did with many of the other beautiful conversations that we had. So... Again, there's a value in staying in relationship, especially when we don't, when we disagree and it's really, really challenging. And it's like, everything says, let's get out of it. We stay in it. And uh, one little last comment about that. You know, we did this panel discussion live. That's one of the two panel discussions I put up on YouTube. And then there's, there's already been 30, 40 comments at the bottom of YouTube. And the comments, you know, they tend to be very divisive and on the edge of being nasty and call, name calling. And, it's just so interesting, you know, commenting on Facebook and YouTube when you're not face to face with somebody, when there's re no real relationship there, it gets to be kind of nasty. And it, even if it's not nasty, it's like separation, 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 separation. Yet here we came together in Zoom face to face and it actually brought us together more. And that, that was a beautiful thing. So there is a value in staying in relationship. And if Aikido is not that, then Thank you, does nothing. So the first uh, lesson that, that stuck with me the strongest is uh, that which unites us is infinitely greater than anything that divides us. Second question is the value of staying in relationship. Uh, the second uh, lesson is the value of staying in relationship. And the third lesson, oh no, I just lost it. Give me a second. The third lesson is network consciousness. That um, it's almost like you know, if you're, at, you're, if you're out at night and there's a storm coming and there's suddenly a flash of lightning. And in that instant of the flash of lightning, you see everything. It's like, oh wow, there's trees and a mountain and a, and a house and a car and some cows and, and then it's gone. But you didn't see it before because it was dark and you saw it, it's just like illuminated clearly, wow. And then it's gone. In a way this telesummit was somehow, you know, that you know, network consciousness is actually real it's there and that we are connected in ways that we could never imagine unless we somehow give it a, a mechanism or a structure or some flash of lightning uh, to help us see it uh, the fact is you know this telesummit didn't connect us this telesummit was just a flash of lightning that showed us that we are already connected that there is already an emerging global community in fact my 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 vision my intuition to do this thing was based on that. It's like, no, I know, you know, and I travel around, I teach seminars quite a bit and I feel it all the time. But you know, I come back here to Tel Aviv and it's like, yeah, people are there. I see you on Facebook or whatever, but I feel connected, but you don't really, you know, it's not there. And yet, you know, when you have this flash of lightning, you realize that the, the, the connections are still there. They're always there. And, you know, and the fact is when you get a bunch of Aikido, Aikidoka together, you know, people that are really kind of coming together for this reason, good shit happens, good things happen, you know? And, um, you know, this network consciousness is somehow, um, I, I feel it more and more emerging. I mean, I mean, I you know, not so long, about 34 years now, but I, it's definitely emerging more and more as, as I, you know, as the years go by. And if you think of, you know, if you've ever seen the map, the subway map of New York City, or Lisbon, or, if there's subways in there, the train maps, yeah. Um, so, but if you've seen the subway map of New York City, Matthew, you've ever seen the subway map of New York City? Yes. What's the What's the most? I'm gonna I'm gonna put Matthew on here for just a second. 
Hey, Matthew, how you doing, man? Hi, Onigashimasu. <laughs> Tell me, uh, so a little quick, quick question for you. The subway map of, of, of New York City, which station has the most value? The, uh, each station has their own value if you live which, there. But which has the most value? Value how so, in, in visual or money-wise or I don't understand. Well, I mean, in terms of um, if you're playing Monopoly with the, with the subway stations and you had to win one of those stations. Yeah, which it would have to be 42nd Street. It would have to be 42nd Street Times Square because that's in the wow. middle. A lot of the trains meet there. Okay, what about Grand Central Station? Grand Central Station is a good station. <laughs> <laughs> So it's, it's basically the same thing you said. It, the reason Grand Central Station has the most value, it's not because it's in, it's in uh, Wall Street or whatever, it's because it has the most connections. Hi. Most of the trains meet there. So Hi. in a way, when we talk about this, uh, this, um, this network consciousness, um, we're, we're networked, you know, and I'm here in Tel Aviv, which is pretty far off the map, but you know, I've got my networks around here. I'm close to Europe. I've got a lot of friends back in the States and I've got connections there. But I'm not in the middle of, uh, when I was in Iwama, you know, I lived in Iwama for eight years. It was, it was really in the countryside in Japan, far off the map. But a lot of people came there. So Iwama had a lot of so-called value, quote unquote value. Hombu Dojo has a lot, of, a lot of value because so many people go through there. It's connected to, so in your dojo, wherever you're at, it has one connection, two connections. Surely it has more than one or two connections, but it probably has several connections where either your people are going and coming or other people are coming and going. And um, in a way, this network consciousness, you know, it's, it doesn't matter. The point wasn't that you have to be the most valuable part of that connection. If you look at the subway map, each station is like a node. And each station is like you and me, or your dojo and my dojo and another dojo. And that we are, we're connected. And what makes that station stay alive or what makes that node stay alive is the traffic that moves through there. And that could be like on Zoom, what we're doing now. We, the, we've connected, let's see how many people are on the call. There's 31 people on the call today. So we have 31 nodes in the network. The node is a little connection point. or 31 stations in the network. And all this information is passing through this network. And, and that's just a beautiful thing. You know, it's, it's, um, it's uh, the wisdom is moving through and it's moving both directions. And um, this is what's so cool about, you know, creating this kind of network consciousness. And um, uh, it's, it's, again, it's like I said before, you know, when you feel connected, if you don't get the flash of light, if you don't get the lightning in the storm to see that you're connected, you, you have to be super sensitive and super intuitive. You have to feel it. And when you feel it, it energizes you. I'm no longer stuck out here in the, you know, in the far end of the universe just by myself. I'm connected and the connection is alive and the connection is energizing and the connection is infinitely resourceable. And, um, and you know, that's, that's, it just became so clear in this telesummit. 2000, I think at the end of the final count was we had 2,300 and something people registered. And, um, and we just, we all connected up. The information might have just been one way, you know, people going to the site and listening to the talks, but that's cool. But a lot of you joined again and again and again, and you got on the calls and we talked a lot. And so we created these connections. So that was just a, you know, a beautiful thing that, that, that this network consciousness is alive. And each station, not only does it have its own value, but it has its own business. You know, network consciousness is not a hierarchy. The value is determined not by who is sitting at the top of the pyramid. The value is determined by how many connections each, each point has. Now, each one of those points, it might be a hierarchy structure, it might be a communal structure, it might be many different types of structures. You know, your dojo may be like very strict Japanese hierarchy with the teacher at the top and the information flows down. It may be a cooperative with a group of teachers that are kind of holding the space and it may be, um, it, it, it may be uh, some combination of the two. It may be just a loose club, you know. But how, whatever it is, when we connect into this network, we start to understand that we that, that we are um, we're a much bigger community, and 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 that we're kind of you know in that community is very alive, 
and you know there's this idea of, of the, the development and the growth of our consciousness is some is very similar to expanding circles of concern so you know my first concern is very egocentric it's about me and then maybe it's about my family here and then maybe it's about my group or my students or my religious group or my cultural group and then it's maybe about my country and then you know if i'm you know that's that's my my circles of con concern can expand out but then they can also expand out to be to you know all people all humans all people in the universe you know there's an expanding circle of concern that that happens as we start to connect more and more through network consciousness and um, i i really found this in, in you know in, in the telesummit and for sure these three things you know they will um, not just inform and enrich our lives, but they'll definitely inform and enrich our Aikido practice. So the first lesson I got from this telesummit was, you know, that which unites us is infinitely greater than anything that divides us. The second was the value of staying together in relationship. And the third one was uh, this idea of network consciousness and more connection, more value in a way i don't know if that's the right word to use i'm still not quite sure there but the, the more that we connect is the, the more energy that, that that is released into the system so um what i'd like to do now is i'd like to give you guys a chance we're going to go into breakouts i see that daniela has joined us i'm going to open your mic hi daniela how are you doing hi i'm fine great can i pass you the the co-host thing yeah sure uh the host yeah. thing if you want me to set up Okay, so I'm gonna pass you the host thing. And is my microphone still open? Yes, it is still open. All right, great. So Danielle is gonna take a moment to set up the breakouts and then I'm gonna I'm gonna um, give you guys a question. And afterwards we're gonna kinda of open it up so we can all talk. I just do want I do want to remind you at the end of this uh, at the end of this telesummit, we've got about another 30 minutes, let's say. Uh, I wanna I'm gonna make a few announcements about uh, the Telesummit archives and a few like uh, special opportunities that I have coming up here um, in a couple of weeks. So um, stick around for that if you can. If you have to leave, um, yeah, okay. So, so I'm just sorry, I'm reading the chat here. Stick around if you can. If you have to leave, you're gonna be getting a, a mail about it. But I've got, actually I've got a few, uh, I got one offer that is only for the people on this call. So uh, it would be great if you could stick around for that. Uh, Daniela, is, are the breakout groups ready? One more moment, please. Okay, great. All right, so let me just give you guys the, the question. So we're, we'll put you into groups of, uh, probably like groups of three. And um, the three lessons I learned, that which unites us is infinitely greater than anything that divides us. Number two, the value of staying in relationship, especially in challenging situations. Now, Bob, Bob wrote a, quote, uh, a comment on the, the chat that says sometimes it is better to separate. I, I completely agree with you, Bob. But even if we decide to dissociate, you know, to like, okay, let's not hang out together anymore or, or organize or relate together anymore, um, it's the emotional or the energetic way you hold that person, you know, do, do, can you still hold them in your heart? Or have you just cut them out of your life forever? You know, that's, a, that, that's, that's the difference for me. And, and the third lesson I learned is the, is the idea of, um, of network consciousness. So, um, so here's the question for you. Uh, when you go into your breakout groups, share with your partner, uh, the number one thing that you, that you learned from the Aikido to Leading Edge Telesummit. And then we're going to come back and we'll do a, we'll do a harvest of that. Okay. And if you, if you feel like there isn't one thing that you've learned, then uh, maybe make comments about any of the things that I, I was talking about. Uh, you know, that which unites us is infinitely greater than anything that divides us. Um, staying in relationship. And network consciousness. Okay. Daniela, are we ready? Yes, we're ready. I'm opening the breakouts now. If you find yourself being alone in a breakout, just be patient. I will move you to a breakout, which is working. Okay? Great. Thanks, Daniela. With us again. Okay, we are all back. Okay, everybody, welcome back to the, to the main room. And um, yeah, I would love to, to do a harvest and, and connect with you guys, open up some mics and, and hear, um, you know, if any of the lessons that I learned had a impact for you let me know or if you want to share um, 
your lesson learned or your takeaway from the, the teleseminar. What came up in your group? Just raise your hand. I see Dave Warden has already opened, uh, David has opened up his mic. I'm sorry, he rose his hand. So if anybody else uh, wants to share, please raise your hand. We'll be waiting for you. And right now, until then, I will open up David's mic. Hi, David. How are you doing? Fantastic, Miles. Thank you very much. Yourself? Yeah, very good. Thank you. So two more weeks before... I... Uh, it's, more... it's like 13 days, yeah. 13 days. Cool. That's, it's that's a fun time. Exciting for you. Um, yeah. So thanks again for the uh, those those three um, three lessons. That was uh, that was excellent to, to, to mull on. I was with uh, Ilet and Matthew in my room, um, and Matthew volunteered me to. Where is my hand? So here we go. Um, so Matthew uh, talked about the idea of Aikido um, being an entity. So suddenly, out of all of these conversations, Aikido itself became this um, entity. This this uh, almost like a being or something or something of, of, of substance and value that all of us could feel and be part of and, and not just be a, a something local to a dojo, but just be bigger, be more global. And I guess that fits a little bit with your network consciousness and, right. and yeah. an idea. Um, but it was a beautiful idea of this, this, you know, this entity. I've always got like a Star Trek type thing in my mind, I guess now. This, <laughs> this big ball of something that's going, going Trekkies on. Trekkies unite. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Alette had a, um, was talking, she had lots of things she didn't say, but if she focused on anything, it was just the, the idea of the beauty of everybody sharing um, their thoughts, their experiences in a, in a positive manner. Um, and, you know, just, just lots of good tips, techniques, open, honest discussion. Um, and uh, that was her primary thing, if anything. And myself was the biggest thing was you know, opening my heart further towards Aikido, a, a bigger love for Aikido since, uh, since I left two weeks ago. Want to talk about it more with everybody, being more open on the mat in terms of how I train with people, accepting people and just being more mm. open and wanting to share this lovely art with everybody I meet on the tatami and elsewhere. That's in awesome. That's so good. You know, David, I, I loved you. You left a, a comment somewhere. You wrote to me. I don't remember what it was. But um, you, yeah. You went from the tele summit to the dojo and it was just yeah. like you, you put it right to work. Yeah, straight away. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, I'm still trying to do that. I'm bringing some things back in from other, other bits and pieces straight from the you know, tele summit into the dojo, into the pub. So that was good. Um, <laughs> And, and yeah, and, and opening the conversation lines with people and just trying to really get, um, and, and adding, and this is what Ma Matthew's saying, adding different aspects. There's all these different aspects. There's the martial aspect, the spiritual, the meditative side, the uki, the counters, you know, all these little things are all making this big yeah. uh, mess of Aikido together and, and, and exploring all those. And you need that diversity. You can't just be focused on a, Oh, we don't think you can just be focused on one particular aspect. You need all, the, all of these little pots of things. Totally, working totally. Together, working together to, to bring Aikido into its, uh, into its full fruition. Yeah, and it's just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. every individual is going to have it. It's going it's to impact them in different ways. And they're going to bring something in it that, you know, that's rich and full, as full as anything that you and I are bringing. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah so, beautiful. Well, so great, David. Feedback. Thank, thank you so much. That's great to yes. hear. All right. Uh, okay, let's go over to uh, Tiago's. Uh, his hand is up. I'm, Tiago, I'm, I'm going to open your mic, but I would love to hear from other people. I heard from you guys during the tele summit. So if anybody else wants to raise your hand and jump in and share or comment or whatever, then please do that. Uh, Tiago. Hi, Miles. I was with with uh, Martin from no from Norway. His okay. his main his main uh, point Norway, was yeah. You, his main point was um, your second lesson about mm. staying in 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 the conf in, in the conflict yeah uh, comment of course so yeah. uh, and he was telling about uh, about the personal experience outside the do the dojo in, in in the job they had a, a discussion with the, with the, with the colleagues it was a kind of a rough discussion yeah and uh, and uh, in the following day in the following day instead of Leaving it, they they sit they sit around the in a round table, kind of something like this, and they talked about and they, they resolved things, and this was uh, it was a 
so they, they they resolved the conflict. If they didn't, if they didn't stay in the conflict, they would never have resolved it. Yeah. Uh, so this it, it was nice uh, because it's it's a it's what what we were, we were talking about. What you are talking about in this in the second lesson. Yeah. It's also nice because it's an the thing that I that I apply, and I think we all we all kind of apply. It's the, to use the IQ of philosophy in, in our lives. Yeah, for um, sure. Um, my main my main point was um, about about uh, when when we're, we're confronting in a dojo. Uh, we're, I'm not an aggressive an aggressive guy, not not at all. But uh, trying to to work in the dojo using this universal love always. So mm. trying to be more more uh, loving that. And that, 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 that was good because uh, we talked a lot about this and uh, I think our, our occidental, philosophy, occidental culture teaches much of the opposite. And uh, speaking about this, reasoning about this, uh, kinds of gets deep into us, and it's, it's then it's it's it will be easier to improve it in in, in, mm. a, in the dojo. This was my main point. We we also talked about the third about the third aspect about the the network, and uh, it, it's really nice this this tele summit and what we're doing here. Thanks to you. Of, mm getting connected with, with each other, sharing experiences. And it's something that it's, it's very important for our own development uh, to create a better IQ in each, in each one of us. And uh, through this also a better world, I think. Yeah, yeah that's beautiful. Yeah. It, it was so nice for me to see, you know, for example, when we had Christian Tissier on or, or Richard Strozzi Heckler or, or Bob Mendo or whoever it was, People jumping in and asking questions, you know, from all over the world, and it was so it was so smooth and it worked so well, and it was like really cool. Yeah, I, I'm again, you know, I'm repeating myself again and again, but <laughs> but I agree, obviously. And Diego, just one one of the things that you said uh, before, I do want to I do want to kind of um, presence what Bob uh, Pierce had said. He said sometimes, you know, the right thing to do in relationship is to actually let the relationship go to separate. So I don't want to say that that's a, I don't want to imply at all that that's a failure. When I say stay in relationship, I, di I didn't say stay in the relationship. I said stay in this relational space with, with others when it's, when it's challenging. And that might mean that we actually create a, a bigger boundary between us, but then mm -hmm. relate, relate with that boundary. Or, you know, if you've got the, 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 the capacity, if you and the other person have the capacity to come together and really dig in, or, or dig into the issue, that's great. Because the, the fact is, you know, everything that we want in a relationship is usually just like on the other side of a really challenging three minute conversation, you know, something like that. But we can never really get ourselves to that point. And, um, you know, Aikido definitely gives us the, the tools to, to do that, I think. So, Diego, thank you very much. Thank you. Right. And uh, Rinsuke's hand was up. Daniela, but I don't see it up anymore. Did she do the, I'm gonna, Rinske, your mic is open. Hello. Hey, I lowered it because I thought of the time. Uh, no, well, we, we got, we're, we're good. We're gonna, we're gonna go for an hour and then, I, then I'll just, uh, I wanna right. tell you guys some stuff afterwards. But uh, yeah, so go for it. How, how are you doing? It's nice to see you. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. We talked, in our session, we talked about, a lot about the, um, the relational part of Aikido, I mean, the, the connection and where you, um, like you said, you, you, your, your circle of concern expands towards including the other. Right. Um, but what I noticed, I mean, I couldn't really identify one unique great lesson from the course because there was so much information and so much sharing and, and mm. insights. Uh, but what I felt on, especially on that relational side, that when I was just during the uh, the summit, when I was just walking somewhere, or whatever, um, knowing that I mean I know you, I know Daniela, I know Patrick, and I know some other people in here, but 
Mm. I never knew there were so many people around the globe sharing this vision and sharing this, like maybe somewhere I hoped, but knowing that there were people in Dubai and in Bolivia and wherever, mm. I mean, Amazing. I felt connected to, to all these people. Yeah. And because of, of having that sort of afterglow, you know, like the talk was yesterday evening and then you were just thinking about it still, it, it really felt connected in my center to all of you um in in yeah such a stable and, and energy giving way that that's something that i'll never forget and i will always like carry that's, awesome. with. that's so great huh? and that's just opening up doors it's just opening up conversation and connecting i mean we're all there and yeah. and you brought us together that's sometimes <sighs> it's like a spark and then everybody's yes we want all of that <laughs> <laughs> well you know Rinske, if i if i could you know for sure like the connection is it's so in, it's so deeply part of aikido and it's also so deeply part of humanity but you came with me about four or five years ago when you were yeah. here we, we went we went to the west bank together right yeah to like i remember you went and it was you know it's it's a cha it's always a challenge to go over there partly because it's so disconnected i mean literally yeah. there's a bloody wall yeah. And you know, the whole Israeli-Palestinian conflict and, 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 and the religious differences and the cultural differences, the, uh, the, what do you call it, the, the economic differences in the culture and it's, you know, and just going over there, you feel what it's like to go into a place that's disconnected. Yeah. I that remember. Much, what can happen, you know, how things just don't thrive, you know, life doesn't, you know, they, God bless the Palestinians, you know, they're doing the best they can under, under not good situations. And, you know, they're, they're beautiful living, beautiful people, beautiful culture. Um, but, you know, it's, it's tough over there. And, you know, more division is not what the world needs. More connection is what we need. And, you know, yeah. and something beautiful. And deep down, we know it. Deep down, we know it. Deep down, we know we it. We all know it. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. No, Renske, thank you so much. Thank you. Good to see you. We'll talk to you again soon, I hope. All right, we'll take, uh, we'll take Randy Bonifay's hand. And then I just want to remind you guys, if you have to leave, uh, maybe stick around if you can. I'm going to tell you about the next, uh, what's going on with the, with the archive site and also a couple of uh, great opportunities that are coming up. So um, wait a second. So Matthew's got to say, okay. So Randy, you are, your mic is open, I think. How are you doing? Good, good. So, so Miles, I, uh, uh, I've been doing this art for quite a long time, and yes. and and one of the things that always bothered me about it was was the political talk that would happen after classes. It just <laughs> made me want to puke, yes. you know, <laughs> because here we are studying an art about harmony and peace, and we can't be so in harmony yeah. with each other. And yeah. what this summit did for me was make me realize how many people out there feel the same way I do. Oh my is God. that is that when we wrap this thing in a in a in a in a in a in a, in a, in a construct of peace yeah. and 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 are able to keep ourselves in that space, then the the, the openness is there. Uh, oh, it's, uh, it's just there. I, I, I was I was I was uh, I was on the uh, I was I was in a chat room with with Morris, and one of the things he he said he loved was he loved looking up at the participants and seeing people who, who were speakers in the last or uh, one, no yes and they were attending the uh, the conferences which is yeah. which means to me, I take off my hakama and I walk into somebody else's dojo as a beginner. Yeah, and exactly. I'm taking what they teach, not what I bring into it, and I think that is uh, the wonderful thing of 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 it, that we are bound by by the things that unite us. Uh, that's that's fabulous. Yeah, uh, relationships for me have always been the most important thing about about traveling around and working in other people's dojos and and connecting with them. Miles, this 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 venue that you put together uh, Morris and I talked about it is that those people who got on and talked and we got to listen to them and I got to see their face 
I actually feel like I know them now. Yeah, it's, I actually yeah. I actually have connected with them, and that's the first time electronically that I feel like I'm connected with someone. You know, email doesn't do it for me. No, Facebook no. doesn't do it for me. No, 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 but no. what we had here was a dialogue and that relationship. Yeah. And it can come across the, the, the electronic thing totally. that's out there. <laughs> when, you know, I'm, I'm doing this for about four years, just gradually been building it up. Nothing like the Tele Summit, but, and, you know, like little groups and stuff like that. And I realized early on that there's some, there's like a digital, you can create this kind of digital intimacy. Yes. It, you know, in, in the right conditions, if it's set up in the right way and, and we get together for the right reasons, it can be incredibly intimate and go very deep. So the other thing I wanted to say is think about the uh, networking as the nervous system. Yeah. It all communicates back to, to the, 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 the brain and, yeah. and that's the core that we all... It's just what's been wonderful about this is to, to, to hear yeah. people, and I've already taken it into my dojo. It's influenced my languaging. It's That's influenced so my context of things. It's, uh, it's uh, uh, helped uh, reignite a passion that has always been there, but sometimes it gets dormant, yeah. and, and sometimes it comes out. Yeah, and sure. this, this particular venue has just energized me and just... Uh, uh, I, th I think if you had an interview with some of my students, they would go, oh, my God, we need to shut him <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> Keep giving him his face. <laughs> wow, Randy, that's so awesome. But wow. what, what, this, what this, I hope, what this does, because one of the things always bothered me when I was on the mat is I, I, I'm not too crazy about mouth, mouth waza when I'm on the mat, I want to train. That's what I want to do. Sure. Afterwards, we can sit down and we can have those talks, but yeah. on the mat, this is, uh, this is, this is what we're doing. And, uh, and it's not that we can't have fun doing it because we should. Yeah. Uh, it's just that this doesn't get it for me. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And I love too, being able to do it. Heady. This yeah, is yeah. the venue for it. Exactly. And on the mat, it's too heady. It's too conceptual. It, it, take, it completely disconnects from yes. learning through the body. And not only that, I would add to that, that, you know, that like, because, you know, I have a Buddhist background as well. And, and they say Dharma discussion. It's a big part of Buddhist teaching because, you know, they sit around and they talk. But all the it was an oral tradition. They would teach verbally. So that's, that's how it worked. So it's a big deal, Dharma discussion. But it's not intellectual um, philosophizing. That's not what it's meant to be. And um, uh, the thing is that in Aikido, we, we, the only time we do that is when we go to have a beer after class. Which is cool. I mean, that's, that's what, if you're going to go have a beer, definitely, you know, whatever. But it's interesting. We, we don't, in Aikido, we don't have a formal period where we sit down and we have a discussion. And that's right. what, that's something that I found is uh, having a formal period where we just sit, okay, look, for 30 minutes, we're going to talk about this. It energize. I've always found that it energizes the practice in a way that it doesn't when we go hang out at the bar or we're having dinner or something with friends. So. Right. Awesome, thank you, Randy. Thank you again for all yeah, this. Yeah, thank you. It's great to see you again, man. Yep. All right. Well, um, we had uh, one more hand up. Matthew Miranda's hand was up, but it's down now. So, and Matthew, if you don't got anything to say, of course, Matthew's got something to say. <laughs> All right, Matthew, how you doing, man? Oop, I, your mic is open. Oh. Okay. Onegashimasu. Onegashimasu. Um, Where, I, yeah, I, I got one question, one question. Hi. Where's the bamboo? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on, let me. All right. Uh, holding up my phone. Now I got to hold okay. up my phone. Else. All right. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about just a few seconds about uh, the 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 revelation, the realization that I came to as um, Aikido as an entity in itself. And I really enjoyed uh, the point that was made by, I forget his name, but it was from uh, Key Society. And, and he made the, uh, David the clarification that it's not extent key, but it's key extent. Yeah, right. Yeah. You remember that? Absolutely. Okay. So I, I thought about how before the summit, 
I, I had this sense where I discovered Aikido and I wanted to, people say, what are you taking? Where well, I'm taking Aikido and, uh, you know, now I have, I'm going to um, distribute Aikido from the filter of what I've learned in Aikido. And when I got on the summit, I realized that I can only be learning from this small little outlet that I have. And I saw all these people learning from Aikido and they were all coming from different uh, aspects. So I mm. saw Aikido giving birth to so many different people and styles and ways of practice and ways of thinking that I came to the realization that Aikido is somewhat of an entity within itself. And we're just the fruits of Aikido. So, and I, and I learned to appreciate that we need people like Lenny Sly and we need sure. uh, Koichi Barish and, and John Stevens. And, and Matthew Miranda. And, uh, yeah. So that, that, that's what, and it really changed my view. And it, now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying, instead of taking Aikido and delivering it the way I see fit, I really and more looking to let Aikido guide me and be more of a vessel of Aikido and see That's where awesome. that takes me. So I feel, I feel more of a responsibility uh, to um, practice more. Pra the, the balance should be practice more than I preach. Not really practice what you preach, but practice more and let so IT awesome. help you to preach. Yeah, Matthew, I mean, in a way, the more I, we understand, the more we understand, the more we're actually responsible to, that it, we're obligated, I believe, to be responsible for that understanding. And that's beautiful. It's exactly what you're saying. Hi, hi. Domo arigato. <laughs> you're very Sensei. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Matthew. Hi. All right, everybody, that's cool. So listen, I, I've got to, I, I do want, I hope you can stick around for a few more minutes because I want to kind of tell you what's going on. Um, as far as the Telus Summit, you know, I don't, it's, I can say for sure I'm going to do another one. Um, it'll be 2018, you know, next year. I don't know when exactly yet. I've got a few projects in front of me that I have to get a, off the table before I can even start to put my mind to that. But uh, one of the other things that, so that's happening for sure. And I, what is it going to be and who's it going to be with and what's going to be the theme? I don't know, but you'll all get like, uh, I'm going to send a survey to, to the whole group. Yeah. And, and, you know, so we can get all your feedback and, you know, you can tell me what you liked, what you didn't like, what would be good. You know, I know we'll take all that and we'll, we'll try to put, say, we'll try to put together something that you want, you know, that, uh, you know, this whole thing was really me and I, a handful of friends that I, that I bothered for a few years, you know, we put, and then I put it together. But the next one, I really want it to be kind of, kind of, what do you say, community driven. So that you'll you'll get a, a a survey for that. But anyways, it's still a few months away before I I get close to that. But I do think I'm going to continue to do these community calls uh, semi regularly, maybe every two months, something like that. And and um, it'll always be around some some teaching or something that's coming up, um, either in 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 you know the Aikido world, or maybe even in the real world, you know, in the political world or something like that. You know, how can we? How can we hold to our truth in these kind of post-truth worlds, for example? I don't know. But um, so, so, so we'll be able to connect up like that. You know, we'll stay together with the, the, uh, the community calls every couple of months. The other thing I want to tell you is that um, uh, the, the Telesummit archives were open for a full, actually 11 days after the Telesummit was open. And I hope that you guys uh, um, were able to kind of get value out of that. Um, I have packaged that, and it is it is a, a, a going to be a digital product that's going to be available on our site. And right now, I have a very special offer um, that the whole the whole Telesummit package is going for ninety seven dollars, and it's only going to be an eight day offer that I'm that I'm offering it. But in addition to the Telesummit package or the archives, um, I'm offering two pretty awesome bonuses. Uh, the first one is going to be a four week mini course that I'm gonna teach uh, on the spiritual dimensions of Aikido. And um, this mini course will be, 
like I said, it would go for four weeks. Uh, it's, it's meant to be an experiential journey to the spiritual dimensions of Aikido, and it's going to be here on Zoom. It's going to start from July. I will be meeting once a week uh, on Sundays. I think one of them is going to be a Saturday because I already have a previous engagement. But the first week will be on Aikido and the non-self. The second will be uh, the second week will be on Aikido and the non-dual. The third week will be on Aikido and the tantric path. And the fourth week will be Aikido and the Evolutionary Impulse. And it's a four-week mini course. Usually goes for $97, like when I teach a four-week course. But this is a free bonus uh, that I'm giving to everybody who uh, takes advantage of you know, the Telesummit archives um, uh, in this eight-day period. Uh, the second bonus is a uh, another mini course. It's an audio course that, that we had done a few years ago called From the Dojo to the World. And um, it's an audio course and a PDF uh, course book. Um, it's, I think we did this in 2015, and it was part of a, a bigger course that we did. But it's together with six of Aik the Aikido World's inspiring teachers, many of who were on the Telesummit. I think all of them were on the Telesummit. And um, uh, Robert Frager Sensei is teaching on O Sensei's floating, o -sensei's floating Bridge. Richard Strozzi Hickler Sensei is teaching on the Leadership Dojo. Richard Moon is, is teaching on Aikido in Three Easy Lessons. Paul Linden Sensei is teaching on um, Aikido. Uh, sorry, Embodied Peacemaking, Patrick Cassidy Sensei is teaching on Evolutionary Aikido, and I had a course there, uh, a session there as well, teaching on the polarity and unity in Aikido. The six, it's a six-part audio course, uh, so six audio files, plus uh, the ebook. Uh, also, that's about a $97 value, completely free, if you, if you take advantage of the, uh, the member site and the Telesummit archives. And these are going to be a limited time offer. It's only going to be for the next eight days that it's going to be. In fact, I'm, you're the first people to hear about it. I'm going to send out the mail the day after tomorrow and then just kind of do a launch for about a week. And I do have a, a one more bonus special for you guys. It's just you can't say no uh, for the first 10 people. And it's only for you. It's only for the people who joined this call today. For the first 10 people that, uh, that go over to the site, I'm going to put the link there now. So hang on a second. Let me find a link for you guys. Um, for the first 10 people who um, take advantage of this offer, I'm going to also give you, here's the link. Boom. It's basically the same page, but I changed it for, for, to a sales page now. For the first 10 people that take advantage, I'm going to give uh, a, one, a, a one free coaching session on whatever you want. You know, it could be about Aikido, it could be about meditation, my two things. Um, and, um, you know, my coaching sessions are usually about a hundred dollars. So, um, you know, boom, coaching session, two free mini courses, uh, two free mini courses. Those are, you know, one of them's live over the next four weeks and one of them's a recorded course that's uh, available. So that's about $300 value, uh, plus the archives, which is only $97. So take advantage of it now. First 10 people that go over there and get it, uh, you get that. If anybody does take advantage of it uh, after 10 people, what I'll do is I'll still do the coaching sessions, but I'll, I'll make them some type of um, uh, like uh, groups of group coaching, like small groups of four or something like that. So um, just go over and check it out. You can, uh, where is it? Yeah, yeah you can just um, uh, click the link there and uh, check it out. All the information is on the page. And also I'm going to be, um, like I said, I'm gonna take tomorrow off. But then on, um, you know, somebody told me, uh, I, I, sorry, I sent the link to Matthew Miranda only for some reason. Hang on everybody, here's the link again. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm off tomorrow, but uh, starting on uh, Monday, I'm gonna I'm gonna open up this uh, this 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 basically um, seven day offer for everybody. So if you wanna get advantage of the extra bonus plus the coaching call, then definitely go over and take advantage of it now. Look, you all had it. You you all had the uh, the archives open for a full week, so um, you know how great the, the the the. By the way, I've been doing this for a while, and this it's the, the member site is a new member site that we started working with about three months ago and I'm just so it's such a great site you know it's such a great the user on the user end it's fantastic on the on the this end you know, the back office end it's a little bit of work but it's just so great that it's all there and um, you know it's going to continue to be there so definitely go over and take advantage of that 
And if anybody has any questions about the, uh, the, the archives page or this, these bonuses or anything like that, just raise your hand and I will answer all your questions. Type it in if you want, I will answer your questions there. Let's see. Renske. Renske is always giving me a joke when I when I try to when I try to sell something. By the way, I don't like selling. <laughs> I don't know if you could tell, but every time I do it, she 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 kind of points to my weakness there. Uh, you know, one of the reasons this is just full transparency. This has always been part of the the, the business plan to do this telesummit and to you know to somehow be able to to package it afterwards. But um, you know, I. I, I won't give you the exact cost of the telesummit, but it's in the thousands of dollars. Um, you know, there was, there was, um, you know, there's, there's like the, the platform costs money. You know, most of it is weekly, weekly, or not weekly, or monthly fees that you pay for all these different uh, parts of the platform. But then in terms of time and energy put in and, and volunteer work and, and, you know, and the small, you know, the little bit that I, can give to part-time staff, um, it, it does work out to something. So if there's some way to give back and you know, if the bonuses don't turn you on and you just wanna give service, then you know, that would be a great way to do it as well. Otherwise, don't worry, the big part of this, this uh, my business plan with the Integral Dojo is to give tons of opportunity to get together as, for free as a community. That's really what it's all about. And if somebody wants to go a little bit deeper, then you know, you're gonna have great opportunities like this to go deeper. Um, part of this, I will say there's one more part um, that uh, it wasn't my intention to do this. My real intention after the Telesummit was to do the master class. And we have 12 teachers, 12 of the teachers from the Telesummit that are going to be, it's going to be a three month course, an intensive course. Uh, I will do that still. I'm not doing it now because I have a baby coming in two weeks and I kind of overestimated the amount of, underestimated the amount of work it was gonna to take to put this together. But anybody who takes this offer, you automatically get that amount discounted from the master or some from the master class. So don't think it's gonna be like double. It's, it's all part of the same thing. So um, that's it. So if anybody has any questions, raise your hands. Type them in. Milo's new website is excellent. Thank you for the next level Aikido without board. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Yeah, that's great. Matthew says, thanks for your free time. Miles, thank you for sharing all your years of building connections and then bringing them to us. You're very welcome. All right, guys, if there's nothing else, we will finish here. I'm going to put this recording up on, our, up on the Facebook page um, within, let's say, tomorrow or something like that, and just share it around. That's, that's it. <laughs> anyway, thank you for all your help, and um, that's it. <laughs>